Welcome, traders. Thank you very much for joining me. And uh, yes, this is being recorded Sunday evening, the 27th of February, in preparation for the coming week, which commences Monday, the 28th of February. Uh, so I'm kind of a, as anticipated last week, very turbulent week. We know we've got uh, Ukraine being invaded by Russia. A lot of misinformation out there, uh, uh, you know, understandably. Um, but certainly what we do know so far is that the uh, invasion is not happening as quickly as Putin has ex was expecting it. We're also knowing, for example, you know, we... Russians are. This is not a war um, that the Russians that the Russians want. This is Putin's personal war, um, and it's not going well. Uh, we know that uh, the Ukrainians are holding their ground. We know that there are more Russian casualties than Ukrainian casualties. We also know that uh, Russian uh, the the equipment they have is broken down and old. Uh, they're dropping their equipment, uh, dumping their tanks, all kinds of different things that we can see in real time are happening thanks to social media. Um, and so we do know that it's not really going according to plan. And so it's reasonable to expect that Putin is not necessarily just going to walk away. He's been wanting this for a while. And I have a personal hypothesis that possibly he needs it because he needs the cash. Um, and I would really expect things to escalate. I don't think he's necessarily in his right mind. Um, and thank goodness we've also kind of managed in the last year at least to get rid of one of his biggest fans out of the US. So we've kind of reduced some of that. And I think today we're seeing that real, we've seen democracy step up, which is really for me has given me um, just inspiring actually to see. I was a little bit worried about with where we've been going with flat earth and um, anti-masking and all kinds of ridiculous stuff and anti-vaxxer stuff. A little bit worried about humanity, but actually the way that I've seen democracy rally has inspired me and I actually do think that there is hope for us all. So, But there is a lot of danger at the moment and so we need to be very, very careful with that. Inflation as it's happening, is not really going to go anywhere. It's global. It certainly is largely to do with energy. Um, we can expect some of that to calm down a bit as the summer, as things warm up a little bit, but it is definitely not going anywhere at this point in time. And it is something that, if it gets out of control, is going to be the downfall of us all. So we do need to kind of just pe keep paying attention to it. So we'll see how things go. But at the moment, it's just, it's kind of a linear escalation and therefore just pretty much on track for that. Um, <clears throat> so we'll see how that ultimately unfolds with regards to the rest of the market letting off some pressure. Okay, so let's have a look at... Uh, any news coming up this week? I think the main thing is everyone's going to be watching to see how the war unfolds um, because uh, it's taking longer than planned for Putin. And the, the rest of the world's swift and solid kind of unity, solidarity against it um, is going to escalate issues. Um, alter, you know, this is my real concern is that I don't really see him stepping backwards from this anytime easy. And if he does, you know, there's all kinds of other stuff that has to happen. So th that's a worry of mine. I think all eyes are going to be on that. However, having said that, in terms of your standard kind of news we've got out of the US, uh, dollar news, this really being non-farm related and numbers coming out of the US, which were kind of not necessarily as important usually as it would be, for example, CPI would be more related to inflation. So right now everyone's worried about inflation, but there's a distraction of this serious uh, war that we need to um, kind of wrap up before we can relax a little bit. But in many ways, it's been fantastic as a kind of a crystallization factor between whether you want you know, to be part of um, an autocracy or whether you want to be part of a democracy. And it's global now. It's amazing to see that. So we are, it's not a good thing necessary, but we are certainly living in interesting times. Let's go to the charts and see how the charts are handling all of that. Okay, so we'll start off with the volatility index. It has been pushing a little bit higher. We could see it, a bit of a rejection here. So basically, my expectation is that it's just going to bob back and forth and creep its way a little bit higher. So um, not too much of a change there. The dollar index here, again, is also creeping a little bit higher, continually edging its way up towards $100. So for now, just kind of watching that, you can see a bit of exhaustion depletion in uh, at, at this 97 level, which historically has been quite a significant level, and therefore we could always see a knockback from that. That's possible if we break these lows on the daily but it doesn't seem to want to change going in that direction. And again, as I said, I think this is more Putin's war than Russia's. Um, there's certainly, I'm just so proud of, you know, the hundreds of thousands of people in Russia that are protesting now. They're getting locked up for it. Um, clearly that Ukraine can even recognize that as well. Um, uh, and so uh, I, I'm just really hopeful that some of that's going to keep things, uh, calm things down, but certainly that's going to support the movements towards a stronger dollar. So we'll see how that goes. We've, here we've got the euro dollar here finding some support on the daily at 1.12, which we were anticipating was a possible it's a strong level. We've got an uptrend on the four hourly. So again, as we come back into these lows here, I want to see if there's a reaction of that and it possibly resumes that trend to the downside. Um, let's have a look at sterling. 
Sterling had a big move to the downside, coming back up, consolidation here. It's not a bad area for it to potentially continue downwards. We've got a weekly downtrend there, but it's very sort of sideways motiony. Um, and so it, it sort of looks as though it, it, it could be a question of the market not really doing anything necessarily. It looks as though we've got a bit of that potential to get a stronger dollar later in the week. But at the same time, the market is still range bound in, in other aspects. So here we've got, for example, Aussie dollar, US dollar looking more bullish than bearish, like it wants to push up towards 0.73. Um, and we'll see how that goes. We've got Kiwi dollar, US dollar, which is going to be a similar thing as well. It's back into a level of support. Can it break through this level of resistance? I think it's fair to say that is a possibility, but I'll be looking this coming week to see if we get a rejection off that weekly level. And again, that would support that idea of a stronger US dollar. Then dollar yen. So dollar yen is going to do what dollar yen is going to do, which is just effectively ping pong between these levels. But it is producing a series of higher highs um, at certainly equal lows here, but on that weekly chart is looking more bullish than bearish. And so it is going to be under pressure to push to the upside, supporting, in that case, a stronger US dollar. Uh, dollar Swissy just maddening in terms of it being completely range bound, but this bullish engulfing candle implies that it potentially a move a little bit higher. We'll see how that goes. Dollar CAD, this one having a rejection off that 1.28 level, this may want to head a little bit lower. So um, I am a little, I'll trade cautiously with these because it's possible that there won't be any trends that last longer than a few hours, um, certainly in terms of daily timeframes and trends of the higher timeframes not expecting too much from that. Just having a look at dollar ruble. So I've thrown in dollar ruble. When I have a look at it, the kind of what I can gather because it's Sunday, it's over the weekend. I haven't really seen the markets. You know, I don't have access to weekend data on that. But from what I understand, uh, there's there's a run on the banks as well. So there's a lot of pressure. And there's a run on the banks. I do feel sorry for kind of Russians citizens who are going to be taking the brunt of this, which will also trigger a little bit of potential inflation. So it's going to be very. This week is historically. This is going to be one for the history books, absolutely, uh, no doubt. But I am curious to see because from what I can hear, the the, the ruble has has weakened in value already substantially, and so it's possible that this week could see it really boost. Uh, to the other side. It had, had been in consolidation for quite a while, for many years actually. Now it looks as though it's boosted the upside and certainly not in, fa in favor, certainly not in Putin's favor. Okay, so let's uh, look at if there's any currencies of interest. So if I look at cross pairs of interest, I do quite like EuroCAD and GBPCAD, just they're looking quite weak. There are major levels of support. 1.43, but that could provide some nice breakouts to the downside. So looking here at GBPCAD as well, looking really nice uh, and weak across the board there. So could be some nice bounces and pullbacks, but looking for continuation trades to the downside on that. Euro Aussie as well, hovering around an area 1.56 where it could, of course, it's been moving down sort of, uh, um, I was just highlighting some previous potential ideas here. If there's a shift in this trend to the upside, then there could be some buying opportunities if these levels hold, but otherwise it's just been slowly but steadily heading lower. Pound Aussie as well. Also big moves down. Any kind of pullbacks into these levels of support, I could be looking for continuation trades to the downside, feeling nice and bearish on EuroCAD, GBPCAD, Euro Aussie, and Pound Aussie. All right, so let's move across and have a look at commodities. Uh, Principally speaking, they are just climbing high. We've got a normal healthy correction at this point. We had a big move to the upside. We've had a bit of a correction here, a weekly bit of a weekly rejection candle. So this hinting at the possibility of a deeper correction on some of the commodities uh, around the world. And let's have a look at that. So gold. So gold last week pushed out, almost tapped 2000 and is uh, obviously fallen right back down, back down towards $1,900. Uh, we've got a bit of a weekly rejection candle here. It's not a strong rejection here. In other words, usually I'd say, look, if it had closed much lower, I'd be expected to continue south. Um, however, I do think that in its run up to this level, it's been wanting to do that for a while. I think it's going to attempt to stay in this area and push a little bit higher. That monthly candle looks really good. Um, so, so far, unless we have a really big fall down back below that 1834 level, which would indicate gold is going to stay in this area for a while. Uh, the alternative is that it manages to crawl back up and we actually close above 1900, which then indicates gold is going to attempt to continue to the upside. So that is something I want to keep a close eye on. The four hour will be clues of that breaking a little bit higher, breaking these previous highs here around 1920, or alternatively continuing to break to the downside there. Let's have a look at silver. Silver had a strong reaction, but even again, that weekly candle is not looking necessarily as, as negative uh, a hot touch or a hot burn as I would have expected. And that four hour looking as though that level of support is going to try to hold and push a little bit higher. So they're just clues that this, uh, although there was a solid reaction possibly over the weekend, things have calmed down a bit and there's going to be a tend to push a little bit higher. Again, that weekly, that monthly chart showing lots of depletion here. So that is really what I want to see us get past. We've got to close above that for me to feel bullish in this coming into March and April. Um, and yeah, it's got signs that it might actually do that. Jump through copper. So copper is just 
a mess, of course, a hot mess, not really going anywhere here. Also potentially got that ability to close a little bit higher, but even here on that four, lots of wicks, uh, lots of wicks on the daily. It's a hot mess, not worth trading. Natural gas. Okay, so natural gas has been actually both ways. It's range bound largely on that four hour time frame. I want to see what happens with it, but I would definitely say it isn't, unlike gold, where gold had a really clear kind of stronger trend to the upside. I'm not really getting the sense of that with this. This isn't tradable. It's swinging in multiple directions and a little bit higher risk. Excuse me. Okay, so West Texas Intermediate Crude, again, similar to gold, that big move up, tapped $100, rejected, come back to an indecision candle. That doesn't mean the game is over necessarily. We've got higher highs here on the MACD. Overall, the monthly looks okay. A lot of this seems to me that although we might have a bit of a move lower, I think it's kind of keen on attempting to tap to, to take another run at that level. We'll see. In isolation, this would be a strong rejection, which would imply that the uh, market's going to move down towards 85. But there's other cl little clues here that say that it isn't the game isn't necessary over here, those monthlies. So again, we've got one more day. That would mean that, you know, end of day Monday, we'd have to see a strong rejection candle here to get that implication that it's going to move a lot lower. Um, so far, though, that is a clear rejection and usually is followed by another move lower. There is a possibility that once it comes down to these lows, it could take another run back up to those highs. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, Brent crude, similar, almost exactly the same analysis. Just noting how that monthly candle is relatively full um, in terms of that it's almost near 100 at this point in time. So again, I'd have to see big moves down to break these lows to become more bearish on it. For now, it looks as though it's managing to hold. We'll see. So it might just be gathering its strength to take another run to the highs. Sugar is now looking more and more bearish. It's got that level there. So I haven't really marked it. I'm going to do it here on the daily, just marking this level here that uh, might be acting as support. And therefore, the price is looking to potentially break through and have a move to the downside. Move a little low, but if it can hold on this and start to break to some new highs here, it'll resume its uptrend on the monthly at any rate. Looking, so what I'd like to see here is a monthly, a green candle there on the monthly to give me signs that buyers are returning to that market. Um, this price section here is actually showing a lot of exhaustion. I'm on coffee now. Um, so although we are in a really nice uptrend, actually, there's exhaustion here, then another move up and rejection off that same 250 level, and then bearish divergence here. So this implies, and then when you look at the monthly, it's obvious. You could see that uh, exhaustion and rejection there. Here it implies there's a high probability this is going to consolidate or potentially have a deeper correction. Um, so some caution on that. Uh, wheat also strong little spike to the downside. This was looking incredibly bullish. It's a nice breakout of this level. Um, again, for me, I although I see, we see that we had that drop across the board. Um, unless we get, you know, let's say the market opens on Monday and everything has just dropped right down. I'm then inclined to think if that isn't the case, then I'm inclined to think the markets are going to try to recover and close a little bit higher. Cotton. Cotton now on a daily downtrend, strong rejection here when it tried to go a little bit higher. It is due for a correction back down towards the moving averages, which at this point could be anywhere around 111, 112. Uh, even on that weekly would be fine where it is to move a little bit lower and then send up, set up a bullish signal. Um, so I'm expecting at least a little bit move lower, but overall it's still not looking necessary that week. Okay, so now we're on to the global indices, which finished a lot higher. So this is exactly kind of what we spoke about as a possible uh, outcome. I just want to highlight that that's a very strong recovery, but we are still in a downtrend, and this is the Dow. So um, that weekly candle is a nice strong rejection, but it is not a strong close. It's not a strong close. It's a weak close, um, which means that the market this week could just carry on going back down. So I'm exercising some extreme caution. Uh, it's a really strong finish. So all of that looks really good. What I need to see um, is to see the market continue to push high, especially start to break through these highs. Um, alternatively, if it starts to break through these lows first, it, it looks as though it's going to finish a lot lower for the week. So again, <clears throat> excuse me, just putting in a lot more lines here as well. Mini S&P, that is a better finish. So that's a nice, strong, almost a close near the highs. I like that a lot more. That's also a good sign. It's still in a downtrend on the daily. It's in a really good area where it could produce a, a bearish candle, but it's starting to break these old highs here, starting to recover. So this is really nice. There could be some green shoots here. And I am optimistic generally. I'm actually, <laughs> this last week was just eye-opening for me in terms of expectations looking here at NASDAQ, for example, that's a very nice bullish close. That's a really great candle. So here, what I'd like to see this week is to see a recover and breaking these previous highs where it wasn't able to do that in the past. You can see the rejection, rejection, rejection. I want to see us close a little bit higher on that. This looks like an inverted head and shoulders, which is going to be fascinating to me. There could even be some potential money-making opportunities, depending on where we choose where the other neckline is. Uh, we're going to have to see how that goes, but uh, I want to say, yes, that's looking good. I want to see there could be some good potential opportunities 
is to the upside. Um, so that's not really a strong finish yet, but if we finish higher on Monday and we get a bit of a monthly green candle, then that is really, really, it's a really good sign. Um, some of them might show their potential move lower, but I'm, this is such a nice solid one. Look at this bullish divergence. So we've got a lower low here on the daily, higher low here on the MACD. That's looking pretty good. That's a very bullish finish on that, and that's quite good. And so, again, really what I want to see is coming week, <clears throat> excuse me, follow through on that and end with a little bit of a green bullish candle if we can f as much as possible, wherever possible on February. That'll look good. So moving away from the US uh, to the UK, strong, bullish, really big bullish candle. Not a great finish on that weekly, but not terrible either. And also just closing near the highs. So most of that's still closing a little bit higher, a bit of an indecision monthly candle there. Please, 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 can we get a nice little close higher just to indicate the market has let off some of that steam and is ready to resume its move to the upside. It is a possibility. Um, you know, we stumbled for several months and maybe the market just needed to do it quickly. But the speed at which the market drops and recovers is mind-blowing to me because that shouldn't be doing it. It should take, you know, it should take weeks, if not months to do, to kind of have, uh, to let off some of that steam. But these days it seems like it takes one week or two weeks at most, and then it it's back up. Uh, the DAX as well. Okay, so this is still in a strong downtrend. It has broken to the outside here. Not as strong a recovery. In fact, in isolation, this would usually be a continuation candle. I would expect the markets to continue a little bit lower. So that is something I'm going to keep an eye on there. Euro stocks also actually exactly the same, although it has closed above 450. Um, I'd need to see price move up and break the high here this week and finish a little bit higher here. So there is the stuff that I have to watch for during the week as it unfolds to see how that ultimately goes. Uh, the Nikkei out of Japan, bullish divergence here again, bit of a recovery here. I want to see it come up and break some of these highs here. So I need to see a follow through. So one really strong recovery on Friday to me is not sufficient just yet. I need to see follow through on that this week because if it just carries on sliding and we start to break those lows then we we're going to get more and more signs that we're in for a longer deeper correction s and um yeah look at this one so i pick up on this the assets out of australia so big move to the downside here you know you can see that exhaustion there and a big drop there and that Week monthly candle pushing to the lows. So remember, what we had was this sort of this lag where the U.S. markets was going through a correction. The non-U.S. markets seem to be holding. Now we're seeing the opposite. U.S. markets and some of the other markets have recovered, but some of the other sort of uh, non-U.S. markets have have started to have their corrections on that side. So just interesting to me to see that. I need to see these markets recover, but now I'm seeing a possibility that they might not be done just yet. Okay, let's move on to the equities of interest. Here we are in Royal Mail. Uh, take into account what I've just seen on some. Of the other some of the other charts all right so we've got on the monthly here lower low back into this area of major levels of support and resistance we'll have to see if it can recover again that'll happen if the rest of the market does but we're now officially in a downtrend on the monthly and i just think that's worth highlighting major levels are down here towards uh, 300 so that's going to be interesting american express amex had one of those big recoveries it was a really good breakout level of resistance managed to break up come back down I want to see how it handles these this area here. There's some really strong um, sellers at 200. I want to see how that goes. But that monthly looks good, man. That's a solid breakout and a continuation to the upside. I need to see how that happens. So should Monday just tank for whatever reason? Because you have this bounce on Friday, and then suddenly on Monday again, you have another, you know, um, uh, a big move to the downside. That's a little bit weird. But um, I'd be a, I, this at this point, I'd be a little bit more surprised by that. I'm still I have. I just lean that a little bit more towards the markets, really trying to push a little bit higher. Um, and so we'll see how that goes. But we're not out of the woods just yet. There'll be a point where it starts to look more and more like we are free and clear to the upside. Apple. So Apple has managed to let off a bit of steam, come into these old highs here. Um, you can see some strong kind of wicks below that. For the most part, it is in a downtrend on the weekly, I might add. And so it could continue down. Um, but we have at least, in my mind, come back into the old highs here. And this is not necessarily um, a bad point for it to attempt to push up. But we do have downtrends on the daily. So I'm just exercising caution there. Arc innovation. All right, there we go. So let's talk about this because we've got here now that bullish divergence. We talk about bullish divergence, especially as we start to break these highs there could be that shifting from that downtrend in the daily back into an uptrend that weekly also starting to look that little bit more bullish the real key is how does price how will it react when it comes back into this price zone because that's where it's just failed and failed and failed and failed and this time if it succeeds that's a pretty good sign um, it is still within this band um, and so if we can finish higher that would be really nice to see but we're not out of the woods just yet okay at t 
Uh, a bit of an indecision candle here. It's managed to get back over 20, let's call it 24, uh, close to 24. A little bit of a bullish kind of sign there, which would ultimately be a higher low. Um, yeah, there's not a lot of clarity on this. It'll just do exactly what everyone else is doing. If, if the rest of the market manages to recover, so will it. Berkshire Hathaway has had a strong, solid recovery. That's a great sign. But this is its real challenge. It's 324, 325, that monthly candle. Not really having produced much more highs, but is not necessarily unhealthy. Berkshire Hathaway is strong. It's very, very strong. And for the most part, my expectation is to see it take another run at that level and see if it can close a little bit higher. BP. All right, so BP actually taking a bit of a hit coming back down to these these lows uh, and is um, struggling a little bit with this kind of range-bound behavior. Um, so I'm not really expecting this to create some new highs just yet. It could actually continue back down towards these lows. It is just stuck between these major price levels. We'll see how that goes. Let's jump ahead. I should just reorder this and put X on close to that. Let's just see if that works. Uh, and I'll just do those in, in that order because they're closer to each other. Here you can really see ExxonMobil has managed to push, is attempting to get past this band of resistance. It's still above this level and therefore there's less resistance for it to go to the upside. So I'm a little bit more optimistic on that uh, by comparison. Coca-Cola. So Berkshire Hathaway is a clue. I mean, certainly one of their constituents that's helping them through this, these sort of tough times is Coca-Cola. Look at that daily, starting to push a little bit, uh, a lot higher, bigger upon back up to these old highs, recovered almost immediately. That weekly candle showing signs. But this is an area where, by the way, it could start to produce hanging men and start to struggle a little bit and then have that exhaustion. But that monthly looking like just like it's taken off. Um, still, in this area, round up towards 65, it could... Um, experience a bit of a uh, swing high and therefore come back down to these levels to test it. So I'll be trading that with caution, but also using, if everything else is starting to climb, some of them are looking really very good. General Motors, in that downtrend, coming back up to test this level, uh, will it find some resistance there or or not? We'll have a look, just keeping an eye that that monthly is now looking, you know, we went from the all-time highs to kind of lows that we haven't had uh, going back all the way to January last year. So we'll have to see a year ago, we'll have to see how that fares. Um, and that could, again, find some resistance here and head a little bit lower. So that's the first thing that I'll be looking forward to see um, how it reacts to that. JP Morgan Chase, managing to stay above that level at 144.11. I want to see it start to break these highs to feel a little bit more confident about that. But it also has some, I was going to say bullish divergence, but it's pretty just pretty much standard there. It looks like it wants to take another run to the upside. It's got to break these highs to, to gain kind of more following um, and to gain sort of strength momentum to the upside. Okay, Meta. So Meta dropped all the way down to 200. Not really, uh, not you know, not super impressed by this. But bigger moves going down to smaller moves, and then sorry, bigger candles going down to smaller candles, and starting to produce wicks. A little bit of a green candle here, if nothing else indicates this could just be doing a bit of a swing on the weekly to head up a little bit higher before it ultimately continues to the downside. That is going to be very interesting to me to see that. My initial expectation to see this move a little bit higher first. Um, but yeah, it's certainly not a winner in this case. I don't think they can claim to be that or um, think like that. Okay, so again, here we've got this bearish outside candle. Uh, where we close, I think is relatively significant. Should we close below all of these candles here, the implication could be that it's going to head a little bit lower uh, here on Morgan Stanley. But actually, it's back within this range here. It could start to work its way back up to 100. If it closes above 100, that would be incredibly optimistic. Uh, that would be a good sign, a positive sign. Um, Netflix. It's trying to stay within this area. So I've highlighted two areas which I believe are where its potential turning points could be. It's still within that band and therefore it's going to be interesting to me as I said. I want to see a nice little green candle that forms in this area or in this area to tell me that the buyers have started to return to the market. That level of support on the four are looking relatively good and bullish divergence on the daily indicates again the market certainly wants to resume upwards from where it is here. It has to break some of these previous highs to shift to get a confirmation of that change in trend. NVIDIA really immediately very, very bullish, really nice bullish weekly candle, potentially going to finish with a bit of a, a wick here. It's in that area again, still qualifies to me. Um, again, same thing again. I want to see this start to break these highs, but finish higher. My expectation is the price action is indicating what it wants to do is to attempt to go higher. Let's see if it can succeed in doing that. PayPal, look at that. Excuse me. Okay, same thing as uh, similar to... Um, uh, similar to, I think it was Meta, has produced a bit of a bullish candle here. And so now what it's going to attempt to do is to 
break this trend on the the four hour as well as break this trend on the daily and work its way back up here it's going to see if it can if it is able to do that to push up and we'll see if it can succeed in doing that and then we have to reassess whether that is part of its longer term trend once it breaks these it starts to change that perception or start to recover from that so taking a hit there let's see how you do spider um, it'll be the same thing. Here's some really, let's just see, there's no real bullish divergence here, but this price section does indicate an attempt to push a little bit higher. This one's really going to do well once it breaks past 100. Okay, once it starts to do that, then I think buyers will be more and more attracted to it. it has got the bullish divergence on the daily, so all of that looking good. Spotify, just managing to keep its head above 40 here at 150, right down to these old lows here. Otherwise, it goes back into that range, back down towards 109. We'll see if this can hold. <clears throat> Not looking necessarily as strong and no bullish divergence there, no bullish divergence, relatively flat. So this week, what I'll be looking for here is a bearish candle and a continuation to the downside. Should it never produce that bearish candle, produce it and not break the low and then come back up and start breaking the, these highs, then it'll be a similar type of expectation that I see on PayPal uh, and NVIDIA and a few of the others. Okay, uh, Netflix and so on. Tesla. All right, so Tesla not producing any bullish divergence here. All right, it is a bullish recovery, but there's no bullish divergence here on this price action, indicating that that momentum hasn't really recovered very much. And so at this point in time, if we just go off the indicator, it's saying to me, look, I think I still want to go lower. All right, so although I had a price band over here and a price band down here, I did mark this area as an area on the monthly where it's also feasible for it to turn around. Um, but it looks as though potentially here it might end up hitting a little bit lower. So that's going to be interesting to me to see what happens with Tesla here. It's not looking at as strong it has to in this case what it's going to have to do is get back over that 900 level this week to see if it can hold above that it's otherwise it's going to run back into resistance and continue to the downside it's going to be interesting to see how these go sometimes in these situations it's interesting to do a midweek market update um and uh, to maybe take it from there. Whereas this is a much stronger recovery. So look at Vanguard, bullish divergence, really strong weekly candle. This implies absolute intent, whether it succeeds or not is a separate thing, but it definitely wants to attempt to push a little bit higher. All right, so let's move on to treasuries. Let's have a look at the 10 year T note. So that hasn't really gone anywhere the last couple of weeks. Um, no real change there. It's still within the moving averages and potentially looking right rejections there. So it could actually end up coming back down towards these lows. It's starting to slow down. The momentum is certainly starting to, it's been moving really quickly here. And the last 10 or 20 candles, it's stayed in the same area. So it is putting on the brakes. And again, this week, I think if we do see a break above these highs, then I would expect to see it starting to potentially change its shift. The euro bubble here trying to go higher, high lows, high highs. It is still in a downtrend on the weekly and a move back up to these levels could find some strong resistance there. It's not a strong trend to the upside. So they're not showing any strong trend. The 10-year T-note's not showing any trend. Euro, uh, Euro points is the same. They look as though they're going to tread water potentially before going down. In order for me to see, you know, feel bullish, I need to see these ultimately break above these old levels of support, not find resistance. They'd be able to push a little bit higher. But right now, they're more bearish than bullish. Okay, cryptos. So... Um, it's interesting because, again, I'm always going to be on the lookout to see if there's a split between cryptos and equities. Um, we're not showing too much of that. They're still highly correlated. It kind of makes sense that they are. Um, uh, and yet, yeah, there's a slightly higher low here. I want to see if this can stay where it is. So the four hour offers some clues. This could be building up to a potential breakout to the upside. And if it does, it'll get back over that 40,000 level. And then we'll have to see where it goes. But we're not in the clear yet. Again, if equities have a bullish week, I'm, I think it's very realistic to expect cryptos too as well. Ethereum, also attempting here to push a little bit higher. It's a downtrend on the daily, but it's a bullish weekly candle. Not a super strong one, but it is a little bit more bullish. And there could be a break above these highs. I, I want to see Ethereum break above 3,300. <clears throat> I want that bullish candle. So you guys know this already. I've spoken about this, but it's not guaranteed. It's got to be able to get to this breakout. If it can do that, it can move higher. Uh, it's just not guaranteed. We're going to have to see how that goes. Binance. So Binance so far has got an indecision monthly candle. It's really coming right down to test this level. So I'll just mark that level out there. Um, and it may not be able to hold if that's going to be the case. It will slip through. Again, I think that this would happen hand in hand with equities. I'd be surprised. Um, it's always you know fair to say I'd be surprised if suddenly cryptos have a really bad experience out of the blue and nothing else does. Why would they be singled out? But there we have it, Solana. Solana also within a range at the moment on the four hour. Look, it's slowing down. It's hovering in this area and it could recover from there, but I need to see these highs broken. I'd need to see some really big moves happening. What I would say though, ladies and gentlemen, lots of small candles. The candles have an increase in size, which means volatility hasn't increased. Um, and that's phenomenal. That's really, really good. Uh, Cardano, 
just below that level here at one. Um, and again, I want to see it get back up above that level. There's no divergence, bullish divergence there. All of this indicating that the moves lower on cryptos would make sense given the evidence that we have. But I'm always want to be optimistic and I want to see if equities can recover. Uh, then I then naturally I think so would cryptos. Alternatively, if cryptos aren't looking like there's any signs of bullishness for this for them, then it's actually feasible that maybe equities won't. So we could be using them potentially as a leading indicator. That would just be fascinating to me. Okay, so on that note, I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you very much. We're 29 minutes in. I want to wish you a wonderful week. Please, uh, you know what, look after your loved ones. Uh, let's take care in these uh, crazy times. Um, let's stay calm. Let's stay rational. Let's look at the evidence. Make sure we weigh it up. Um, and let's not get taken in by propaganda. All right. So uh, thank you very much for watching my videos. Thank you very much. Give it a like and subscribe. If you, uh, I, I hate to be that guy, but I'm going to be that guy. Give it a like and subscribe and share it with people if you think that there's some value here. Thank you very much.